welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today we will be discussing about a young male who presented to our er with knee injury so we have a volunteer here baiju he will be the patient today so uh, we have a 25 year old male patient who presented to our er with a twist injury to the right knee while playing football okay. so initial 10 second assessment patient was conscious oriented and was obeying commands his airway was patent and there was no pooling of secretions or gurgling his c-spine also was normal uh, breathing part his respiratory rate was 20 per minute with saturation of 98 percentage in room air okay. circulation his heart rate was 80 per minute with a blood pressure of 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury and there was no active bleeding disability wise uh, his uh, gcs was e4 e5 m6 and uh, pupils were also uh, equally reactive and his pain score was 7 on 10 and exposure part hypothermia was prevented by warm blanket and I offered him analgesia and I gave him one gram IV paracetamol was given to him. Okay. Suppose uh, this be an OSCE station, uh, this history will be given to you. But uh, in this station, we are just elaborating the patient history. So initial assessment, there was uh, nothing major yeah. for your airway breathing circulation except for an pain Wait, of 7 by 10 of the knee joint. And we have offered him analgesia right. and uh, we have given some non-pharmacological measures right. like we can uh, splint, uh, splint the knee, mm. we can give some uh, ice pack application can be given and uh, uh, IV also can be given. IV also can be given. So, main thing, uh, you have to offer him analgesia. Pain management is the key here and uh, we have done the primary assessment. Uh, any adjuncts to the primary survey at this point you wanted? We have to immobilize the knee at present. Uh, mm. We will give ice packs and analgesia. Uh, that is the adjunct. Then okay. we will go into the examination. Okay. Again. So, airway, breathing, circulation, disability, exposure is done. Prime, adjuncts to the primary survey, nothing else we need. And we can go to the secondary uh, examination. Carry on. So, uh, before examining the patient, we will have to first introduce ourselves to the patient. Uh, just uh, like the secondary assessment, we have to do the proper, proper secondary assessment. But here, there is nothing major as if it is an isolated knee yes. joint injury. So, we are going directly to the knee joint examination. So, we can do the procedure. Now. Yeah. Uh, first, I will introduce myself to the patient. Mm. Then, after that, I will have to confirm the identity of the patient. Yes. Then, after that, we will have to uh, tell the procedure to the patient, explain the procedure, what all step tests we are going to do and not. Then, we will have to get the consent of the patient. Okay. And the most important thing, if it's a female patient, we need to have a female staff. Female staff. Chaperone is uh, mandatory. Uh, and the privacy of the patient uh, is, again, uh, superior. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, after getting the consent, we will have to expose the knee. So, he is having a uh, injury to the right knee joint. So, we will be exposing the knee. Uh, we will have to expose the, both the knees. First, we will be doing the inspection. So, inspection, we will be uh, checking both the knees together. Uh, knees will be, uh, we will be looking for any um, scars or deformities or injuries, active bleeding, any sinuses or um, other uh, injury, uh, this thing should be checked and posteriorly if possible at present we will not be able to and posteriorly also should be examined for active bleeding or any deformities. Okay. Also with that we will have to examine the patella, patella whether the shape, size and location is correct or not and also if there is any wasting of the muscles like means the quadriceps muscle. Uh, muscle wasting or the popliteal uh, tendon or anything deformity is there that also should be examined so standard inspection we have to follow yeah. we have to look for any uh, major the classical thing any swelling any deformities any scar sinuses any discoloration to the skin anteriorly we have done ideally we have to do posteriorly also popliteal also we need to inspect and uh, look for any uh, swelling again any cyst or anything we can able to fullness of the popliteal fossa all those things we can do for now uh, external examination obviously we might not be able to uh, find out a minimal effusion that for that reason we need to do some special test but if there is a major effusion or a hemarthrosis we will be able to uh, see within our inspection itself okay after inspection, we will be going to palpation. But before palpation, we will have to again ask the patient and offer him analgesia. If at all his pain score is still high, then we will have to uh, offer analgesia and uh, reduce the pain. Okay. Then after that, we will be going into the palpation. Palpation. So, uh, first part in the palpation, we will be looking for the tenderness and temperature of the knee joint. Then after that, we will have to examine the certain areas of the knee. That is, we will have to look for the fibular head. We should palpate, palpate. and examine for tenderness. Then the tibial tuberosity. Then the medial and lateral uh, side of the patella. There will be medial and lateral collateral ligaments. Then we will have to look for the tenderness over the patella. We will have to examine the popliteal tendon 
and uh, the popliteus tendon and also the quadriceps tendon quadriceps also tendon. should be palpated and both the uh, condyles of the femur should be palpated. So these are the bony prominence that you need to palpate. So first of all you can just elaborate it once again. The, we will have the uh, fibular head the uh, uh, tibial, tibial tuberosity, tibial tuberosity yes. the patella, the uh, popliteus uh, tendon, then the uh, quadriceps tendon and both the condyles and the medial and lateral collateral ligaments. Ideally, uh, anteriorly these structures we need to bony prominences and some tendons we need to palpate and look for the tenderness. So, that is a basic bare minimum. Fine. Then we will have to look for the neurovascular assessment. So, we will have to look for the uh, popliteal pulse should be examined and also the distal pulses, the dorsalis, tib uh, uh, dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibial artery pulsation also should be checked. If there is a fibular neck fracture, what do you suspect? Uh, if there is a fibular head, the common peroneal nerve will be uh, going through that and there will be injury to that. So, there will be uh, reduced sensation over the uh, first uh, web space. So, that should be excellent. Also? Also, patient will be having this uh, food, drop. Uh, food drop will be there. Yeah. Okay. So, that is a, that you can look in for your inspection, you will be able to assess. That is your uh, inspection, palpation. Okay. Now, what else you want to do in palpation? Yeah. Then after that, we will be asking, uh, before palpating, we will be asking the patient to move the uh, lower limb, uh, move the knee. Uh, if you flexion. Can. Yeah, if flexion extension passively we will be asking, then we will be looking for the joint. Okay. So, uh, we will first ask the patient to uh, flex and extend the knee. Uh, to the maximum flexion and extension. 135 and degree is the maximum, maximum that is possible. Extent. So, uh, we can do it actively and passively. passively. Uh, that is the um, range of motion. We are checking the range of motion by doing that. Then we will be looking the joint examination. So, most commonly we will be looking for any joint effusion. For that, we will be doing the patellar tap test. So, a patellar tap test is usually if the patient is lying supine, the any fluid or joint effusion in the knee will be collected in the suprapatellar fossa. So, that should be suprapatellar fossa should be milked so that all the effusion, effusion will get collected under the uh, under the patella and we will have to press on to the patella like this. So, if there is an effusion, we will be getting a uh, feeling that clicking like feeling. Clicking like feeling, you will be able to see. That is the patellar tap test. That is for the joint. So, suprapatellar, whatever collection is there in the suprapatellar bursae, we are milking it down uh, towards the patella okay. and we are uh, looking and pressing the patella and you are looking for any sound. If there is any minimal okay. effusion, it can be a blood also or uh, any other fluid, you will be able to feel that clicking feel. That feel you will be able to see. So, once you palpate, you will be able to understand what is the difference, what is the normal, what is the abnormal one. So, that is regarding your patellar tap test. Okay. Then, then we will be, uh, 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 we will be examining the uh, uh, ligaments. So, we have uh, six major ligaments in the knee joint. So, we have the anterior and posterior cruciate ligament that is inside the joint and then we will be having the medial and lateral collateral ligaments that is outside the joint and we will have two menisci, medial and lateral menisci we will be having and we have special tests for these three ligaments. Uh, these three six sections, ligaments. ligaments. Six ligaments we need to examine and soft tissue. Maybe menisci, two menisci, two lateral and medial, uh, medial collateral and lateral collateral ligament and anterior and posterior cruciate ligament. Okay. So, first we will examine the medial and lateral collateral ligament. Uh, for that, first for examining that, we will have to flex the knee of the patient to 30 degree. So, uh, if we are be able to bring the patient to the edge of the bed, we can uh, test for that. So, first we will be flexing the knee to 20 to 30 degree. Then we will be doing the varus and valgus stress test. So, to do that, for varus means we will be uh, rotating the leg medially so that the lateral part will get stretched. So, we will be flexing the knee uh, uh, into 30 degrees. We will uh, be rotating the, this to in a varus position that is medial rotation. So, and we will be checking for any pain or any extra movement which is happening. So, that means the uh, lateral collateral ligament is injured. injured. And similarly, in the same position, we will be able to do the uh, lateral rotation, that is a varus action. And if there is any pain, then uh, over the medial aspect, that means the medial collateral, collateral ligament is injured. injured. So, this is here for your varus, varus and the valgus stress test, 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 test for, for your the medial the and lateral, lateral collateral. collateral. Okay, continue. Then after that, we will be doing the anterior and posterior drawer test. That is for the anterior and posterior crochet ligament. For that, we will have to flex the hip to 45 degree and flex the knee to 90 degree. And ideally, we will have to sit on the patient's foot and we will have to uh, 
hold on to the tibial tuberosity and we will have to uh, push and pull the uh, tibia. So we will have to push the tibia anteriorly to check for the anterior cruciate ligament and posteriorly to check for the posterior cruciate ligament. Pull for your anterior and push for push your posterior, posterior cruciate ligament. So any giveaway, giveaway feel feeling or feeling is a uh, pain uh, that means that uh, that is injured, that injured. Uh, cruciate ligament is injured. injured. Okay. okay. That is the anterior and uh, posterior droid test. Then we for the meniscal injury, we will be having the McMurray test. For the McMurray test, we will have to flex the knee and we will have to rotate the uh, knee as we do for the um, varus and valgus cross stitch. We will be medial, we, uh, rotating medially or laterally. So uh, first I am doing the middle rotation and we, I will be checking for the uh, lateral meniscus and so middle rotation is done and then we will have to ask the patient to extend. Any, pain? Any time this patient is developing a pain or pop sensation that means that uh, that meniscus is injured. injured. So similarly we will have to do the lateral rotation for the medial meniscus. Okay. These are the six, uh, special tests for the six ligaments. So McMurray's test, the classical one is for your medial meniscus. Reverse McMurray, when you do the same on the reverse attempt, it will be the a reverse okay. McMurray, it will feel the lateral uh, meniscus, okay. sorry, uh, lateral meniscus, yeah. So, medial meniscus, lateral meniscus, so six tests that you need to remember. See, this is not an exhaustive examination of the, there are a lot of name tests, but in an emergency room, acutely what we can do is this six tests, you can look for the six ligaments that we commonly get injured, that is the medial collateral, lateral collateral, anterior droid, posterior droid, medial meniscus and lateral meniscus. Ideally, if the <coughs> patient is having severe pain and all, we will not be able to uh, get this uh, finding and we are not supposed to do it because it will be a very painful procedure, procedure. and sometimes the patient can present with a combined injury that okay. means in football players and all usually the medial meniscus the medial collateral ligament and the anterior cruciate ligament will be Get. injured together so that is the most common sort of an injury with the football players so acl mc uh, medial collateral ligament and as well as the Medial, uh, medial meniscus. meniscus. So, this is the classical uh, injury that you used to see in the football player. Now, uh, you have done your evaluation and uh, you have come to a conclusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, next what will be your step? Uh, next, we uh, will be doing proceeding with the x-rays and all, sir. For uh, x-rays also, we will be applying the Ottawa Nero. If we are not getting any clinical finding or classical finding, we will be uh, sticking on to some points to uh, for an indication for an x-ray. For that, uh, we will be uh, taking some uh, step. That means, we will be checking the age of the patient. If the age is more than 55 years or if the patient is having tenderness over the fibular head or tenderness over the patella, if the patient is not able to flex the knee more than 90 degree or if the patient is not able to take, uh, take four steps in the ED, these are the indications for an X-ray knee joint. Uh, in the ED. So, suppose a patient is coming with a knee joint injury, you have done your basic investigations and you are not finding anything. So, we have in a confused mind whether go ahead with an X-ray or not. So, use the Ottawa knee roll and if any one of this is possible, positive, we need to go ahead and proceed with an x-ray. Yes, yes. So, basically, if anything is negative, you can give an analgesics, maybe a crepe bandage or anything and you can ask them to review right. back in the OPD with an analgesic. But, if anything is there, an x-ray is definitely warranted. Okay. So, once the x-ray is done, what will be the next step? Uh, once the x-ray is done, we will have to look for any bony deformities or any uh, fracture lines or any uh, difference in the spaces and all should be examined. And still, if we are not getting a diagnosis and the patient is still having pain, then we will have to consider uh, the ligament injuries because ligament injuries cannot be seen in the x-ray. For uh, getting the ligament injuries, we will have to proceed with an MRI. MRI mm -hmm. is the uh, investigation choice. So, MRI, again, the other part is the tibial, the uh, proximal tibial fractures. Sometimes uh, it will be missed in an x-ray also but maybe in that time you need to go ahead with the ct also if you have a suspicion in your mind either ct for your bony injuries or definitely an mri there is no bony tenderness but still uh, you feel there is an uh, ligamentous injury you can go ahead with an mri so what will you tell to the patient you need to explain each one of your examination findings and this is what has happened we have done certain tests and we have found out that this ligament is having injury and you need to explain the procedure in detail what will be the next step whether we need to go ahead with an mri x-ray and all those things and you need to explain him and you need to agree him that if any doubt is there, he can ask you back and after that you should be thanking the patient. So, that is a routine dictum. So, you need to summarize your findings and you need to tell your clear findings to the patient and what is the plan, everything and then you have to give him some time to explain this procedure. So, when you go for an OSCE exam, it is just a 7 minutes thing. Sometimes it will not be able to proceed. Once you practice only, you, that you will come into that group. So, standard uh, 
books you have got that uh, performer checklist so you can just go with the checklist and uh, we can finish it off so uh, that will be uh, regarding your uh, knee joint examination uh, and again immobilization what are the options you can either go with a simple crepe bandage or you can go for uh, a uh, knee mobilizer uh, uh, knee mobilizer. mobilizer can be used or a cylinder cast can be cylinder used. cast can be used or a, maybe a posterior slab also is fine depending upon how you want to immobilize that limb okay thank you thank you Bajo. Okay. Thank you.